out on the eastern plains towards Nebraska are rural communities that rely on their land, their faith, and their schools. And at the same time, COVID hit Sterling, Colorado. The Valley School District RE1 got a new superintendent, Shyla Adolph. Absolutely. First off, it made building relationships very difficult. She says the pandemic had a big impact on her transition to a new town and new job. It is unfortunate because there's sort of a honeymoon when you move to a new job. People are excited usually for a new leader and those types of things. And I would say that was cut very short. Within a period of six months, six members of her executive staff had left, including former chief financial officer Luke Jaynes. I found out quickly that, that she was a difficult person to um, get into contact with, even as a member of the senior leadership team. Jaynes says he needed to discuss urgent school budget matters with Adolph, but she was not available. I was just concerned that frequent financial information that would, that would come across my desk, I, I couldn't communicate to her effectively. When it came to running the district, Jaynes says Adolph was unfairly harsh on her staff. That's something I heard from teachers, that's something I heard from paraprofessionals, that's something I heard from administrative assistants, from uh, directors, uh, and it, it's, it was a district-wide issue. Well, I do think I have a very different management style than they've experienced before. Um, going into the buildings is new to them. This community is here to stay. Superintendents come and go. Kristen Stromberger is a mom. This is why I'm fighting. She says dozens of teachers across the Valley School District are leaving because of Adolph. And she's worried how this will impact the kids in a district with more than just 400 staff members total. Because finding people to replace those who are leaving will be hard. A lot of these teachers are farmers' wives, community members, people that have been here, plan to retire here. I really do feel like it's doubt and fear, like the anticipation I'm going to upset the apple cart more than actually what have I upset. We don't have a CFO, an HR person, or an IT director. So I talk about loss of internal controls or we don't have any, that's a huge deal, especially when working on budget right now. We're one of the few schools in the state of Colorado that's been open since August and hasn't shut down one entire building. Adolph says she's proud to have kept in-person learning open all year. And when it comes to the numbers at school, this district does need a change. We've lost 778 students over the last four years. So to me, I can take the blame for this or they can pin it on this year. That's fine. I'll weather the storm, but those are still indicators we need to move. She believes the real reason she's come under fire is that out here on the Eastern Plains, this is a conservative countryside. I am called liberal here and that's frustrating, but I'll do my best. There are probably members of the community who feel that way. Absolutely. But that's, once again, that's not why we're here today. People aren't lining up to speak at board meetings to talk about how liberal she is. Jane's believes Adolph is tanking the district for a push to raise taxes for schools. I don't know what she wants. I don't know what her vision is. Adolph says Sterling needs a strong school leader who does have a vision to save a struggling district. That's what I think they deserve here. They deserve a very defined strategic plan. Adolph says she deserves a fair chance to lead this district out of a pandemic. We're a rural community. We know each other. We know our neighbors. And I think we can build on that. In Sterling, Nelson Garcia, 9 News.